we praise the Lord for a house full of angels, all shapes and sizes, and more on the way. So Our Lady is very pleased to have you here. Remember now, your souls are not contaminated, so heaven is very close to you. And in a few minutes' time, there'll be a huge number of angels here. Actually, they're already here because the sacrament has been put in this tabernacle for this celebration. But there's a whole army of angels waiting for the consecration. In the old rite, we can't hear it, but they can hear it big time. And it's waiting, 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 and he's there. So we need to be just as attentive. He's there, but he never comes alone. This is an interesting day. It takes me back actually to student days, and even actually to early student days, way back in the 70s, because during classics, the university sent me on their money to Rome and Greece for the summer to investigate old Rome and old Greece. So for a week I was in Rome, and I woke up at dawn in the station in the middle of Rome, having got off the aeroplane, and walked to the nearest church I could find. It happened to be I found out later St. Mary Majors, the very church that we're feasting on this day. So I got in, and wow, it was all happening. It was full of all kinds of things going on at seven in the morning. Priests at the altars, and processions going on. It was actually a special year that year, 1975. And there were pilgrims from all over the world. I thought, wow, this is Catholic life in the heart of the Eternal City. And one thing caught my eye in particular. I went to confession there, because the confession is happening all the time at that time already, and the spiritual advice was given by the priest from inside. It was simply this, don't let your haversack out of your sight. Your, mm, interesting spiritual advice, but very down to the ground. And then I looked around as I was praying and asking whether there was a celebration where I could receive Holy Communion. And one of the priests said, no, there's one there where there's Holy Communion. So there were celebrations all around. And so I went to that one and received the Lord. As I was praying, I was very moved by one little thing. It was just this. I happened to see, amongst all the other priests going around, just this quaint, loving priest going on his own with his chalice up to one of the quiet altars. The altar of this day. It's called the Altar of Our Lady of the Snows. And behind it there's a big picture of Our Lady raining snow over Rome. It happened on this day, the 5th of August, which is not normally the coolest day in Rome, in the heart of the Roman summer, snow falling from heaven on one specific spot, the top of the Esquiline Hill. Now, do you know how many hills there are in Rome? Does anyone know? It's the perfect number. Yes, it's seven. It's seven. And there's reference to it veiled there in the Apocalypse. So anyway, one of them is the Esquiline. And it was there that Our Lady wanted to reign over Rome. Now, the time was actually quite important because something was happening at that point. It was when the bishops of the world were trying to sort out how the Lord was God and man. It's very complex because it involves all kinds of problems. His soul, his will, his body, his person, his nature. And it's extremely difficult, and it took several centuries to work it out. But one of the big points was a council held in Ephesus, which is regarded as Our Lady's place. It said that Our Lady lived there with St. John for a while. And that's why they chose that place partly. And so they thrashed it out, and by the Holy Spirit they were given an intuition, we can sort it out by going to the mother. Because if we define the mother, then we're also defining the son. So they gave her solemnly a title, which comes to us in a bad translation as mother of God. It's very sort of, because actually it's literally the birth giver of God. In Greek, theotokos, because tokein is to give birth to, but mother implies something a bit different, but it's the closest we've got. In Latin, they use a special word, it's genetrix, dei genetrix. It just means the one that's given birth to God. Now, the point was this. They were saying that she was the one who gave birth to the one who was already God in her. But what she was doing was giving our bits to him, the humanity. He couldn't just come like that from heaven without the intermediary of a mother, our blessed lady. And therefore, she was prepared. As we give great care to Jesus when he's coming at the altar, we prepare, everything is clean, everything is ready, and we give 
attention also to our soul by confession. We had confessions this morning. And we tried to be interiorized. So it is, our Lord wanted the best of homes. And so he prepared our lady from way back. The Immaculate Conception and wonderful parents, Joachim and Anna, whose feast it was the other day. So this was the preparation done. Now, Our Lady, at that time, made this miracle. The date of the Council was 431, and the miracle happened about the same time. And after they were able to build churches in Rome, after 313, when there was peace at last, these were starting to be built straight away. And this was one of the first, but it was actually made perfect by Pope Sixtus II. And it's more or less the one that we have now, essentially, to this day. And there are old mosaics there. And it's right in the heart of the Roman shopping centre. And do you know that something very beautiful happens there every year? The main street linking that church with the Pope's parish church, which is actually the Lateran, St. John Lateran, is just one big chapel, one day in the year. Can you imagine what day it would be? What is the big day when we do something physical, when we move around for the Lord? We had it the other day, actually. It's not the Marian feast itself, but it's another one. Well, when did we go in procession in the streets? Corpus Christi. And that's the one day when the whole of the middle of Rome is taken over, in a way, by the Pope, the whole of Rome, because they're all there, thousands and thousands, all the priests, all the seminarians, all the people, nuns, armies, they're all there, going from St. John Lateran, right through the centre of Rome, to St. Mary Majors, and the Holy Father is there, holding the Blessed Sacrament. So they're enthroning Jesus, and taking him to his mother, in the middle of Rome. And by the way, the Pope I think when he was made Pope, that was the first thing he did afterwards. He went to present his papacy to a Blessed Lady in that chapel after he was elected. So she's kind of important for Rome, but she's important for the whole church. This is the most important church of our Blessed Lady throughout the world. And when, eventually, I was ordained, I was sent back to Rome straight away, and I looked for that church, of course, and I, when I could, every Saturday, went there, and celebrated on one of the altars, you just ask for an altar, and they give her any altar, they're priests all over the place, at seven in the morning, and often it might be that one. So I was back again years later, on that same altar, because what hit me was this, wouldn't it be wonderful one day, just to be like that priest, able to go at seven in the morning, to one of these altars, and be just with Jesus and Mary, with the angels, in a quiet celebration, where you only look at Jesus and Mary, without having to worry about the people of God. And it's true, when one is alone with the angels, there's no human distraction, and one can feel, as it were, a flutter of wings all around. They're huggling around you, waiting, waiting, waiting. Do you know, the Padre Pio said there was a huge number of souls, as well as angels, coming, waiting to be helped at that altar. He could feel them around, he knew them, they were all tugging at him, wanting some of the merit of the celebration. So that's what we have, even on one's own, at the altar. So, zoom into what we've got. Let's finish with one last thing. Our Lady is concerned about the little people. He's, she's very pleased to have her here, you here, and she's very worried about what's going on right now in Ireland. Because one of the most horrible things one can do is take away the life of a child before it sees the light of day. And right now, there's a huge number of children not being allowed to be born. Actually, we're going into millions and millions and millions all over the planet. It's an awful insult to God, and it could lead to something going hugely wrong on the planet. Do you know that Mother Teresa, now Saint Teresa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, it's the greatest threat to peace on this planet, abortion. You know why? It's the blood of the innocent crying to heaven. So we pray especially also for that now on this first Saturday. May Our Lady watch over the little people, especially those who don't see the light of